Okay, this is a continuation of the topic Disturbance of Mentality from the book of Pedro Solis. Okay, so by the way, um, there are uh, slides from my discussions or from other discussions which are taken from the internet because the book of Pedro Solis is an old book. So, some of its um, ta uh, discussions are outdated. Okay. So, let's... Okay. Mental disorder. It is a condition of the mind. For example, um, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, ADHD, anxiety, parasomnia, okay? necrophobia, and so on and so forth so disturbance of mentality it is a medical condition in which someone is mentally ill and does not behave normally okay so the person does not function normally in society okay the the, the person is dysfunctional recent court dis decisions are moving to a broader definition of mental illness some rules now even defined mental disease and mental defect to include addiction, alcoholism, and conceivably even the slightest aberration of the mind. The expansive meaning of insanity cannot always be tolerated by law. Law and psychiatry have been in collision in the recent past. Okay, Because sometimes uh, the language of the law is very restrictive. And then, mental conditions or mental disturbances is a very broad topic. That's why uh, the law wants to define mental disorder, okay, in order to be applied literally. And if it is, um, it, it has legal implication, proper penalties will be given, okay, or exemptions or other um, applicable uh laws can be applied in in that certain situation mental deficiency failure in the intellectual development that is marked by low intelligence or mental retardation and that may result in an inability to function completely in society okay so the person has deficient in mental capacity Idiots, those so defective that the mental development never exceeds that or a normal child of about two years, okay? The mental age of the person is below two year old, okay? Even if that person is like an adult or has the age, has attained the age of majority, which is 18. Imbeciles. Those whose development is higher than that of an idiot, but whose intelligence does not exceed that of a normal child of about seven years. Okay, so you are you are considered an imbecile if your mental capacity is not more than seven years. Morons, those whose mental development is above that of an imbecile, but does not exceed that of a normal child of about 12 years of age. Feeble-minded. Person whose mental defect, although not amounting to imbecility, is pronounced such that he requires care, supervision, and control for his protection and for the protection of others because uh, uh, these persons are dysfunctional. Okay? They cannot integrate in society because they lack mental capacity in order to integrate themselves into society. He is incapable of receiving proper benefit from instructions in ordinary school. He lacks initiative and ability for any work or responsibility. He has a mentality similar to that of a normal child between 7 to 12 years of age and an IQ of 40 to 70 okay 
So the mental capacity of this person is around 7 to 12 years old. Even though that person is um, older. Okay. Moral defective. In addition to men mental defect, there are strong vicious and criminal pro propensities so that the person requ requires care, supervision, and control for the protection of others. Okay? Classic example for this are psycho killers. They are morally defective. They cannot feel anything. They don't have remorse. Okay? So, he is devoid of moral sense and often shows intellectual deficiency. Though he may be mentally alert, he is careless, pleasure-loving, and a devil-maker sort of young man or woman who adheres to the principles of live today for tomorrow we die, live fast and die young, and it is only happiness that counts, okay? Now, let's go to classification of mental retardation. So, mental retardation is classified as follows. First, profound. IQ is under 20. Incapable at most to limited self-help. There is most likely a need for hospitalization or some type of environment in which care is available throughout his lifetime. Okay? So, this type of person uh, cannot um, function, cannot help himself, okay? That's why he needs assistance from other people, okay? Next, classification is severe. IQ is between 20 and 35 and capable of habit training as a child. As an adult, he is likely in need of a controlled environment. Third, moderate. IQ is 36 to 51 and can develop academic skill equal to about the second grade level. As an adult, he will most probably need a sheltered environment. Okay? And fourth is mild. IQ is 52 to 67 and constitutes the greatest group of mentally retarded. He can develop academic skill to about the sixth grade level. As an adult, he can develop social and vocational skills. Whether he is to be institutionalized or not depends more on his social skill and on the range of alternatives available to him than on his intellectual functioning. Although it is not a part of the original standard classification, a fifth degree known as borderline retardation with an IQ of 68 to 83 may be added. Okay? So, there is borderline retardation. Methods of estimating mental capacity. First is the intelligence test. So, at the age of 18, the human mind is presumed to have attained its full development. Knowledge acquired after such age comes from experience, memory, and study. Okay? Um, in law, 18 years old is the age of majority, okay? It, uh, at this point in time, you are considered an adult, okay? Because uh, in the Philippine setting, a minor is age 1 to 17, okay? Or 18 below, below 18. There are many different tests used by psychometrists and it is sufficient to mention some of them. Performance tests don't require the use of language. 1. Good enough draw a person test. A subject is asked to draw a person and a number of corresponding points are given to different parts of the body and clothings. The test can provide evidence for personality functioning and conflicts as well as intelligence estimate. Okay? Raven Progressive Matrices Test. This test is useful in measuring the person's ability to reason by analogy, for comparison, and to indicate the logical method of thinking. Okay? It covers verbal test. This depends essentially on words and numbers. Mixed, like verbal and nonverbal tests. Binet test. 
Wixler's test. Okay? Please refer to your book for further instructions. Next is intelligence quotient or IQ. Several test types are prepared corresponding to every age in months and these are answered by the person examined. The age of the person examined is determined in terms of months. Example, a child at the age of 8 years and 4 months was able to answer the test for 7 years and 6 months. 8 years and 4 months is equivalent to 100 months, while 7 years and 6 months is, equ is equivalent to 90 months. 90 divided by 100 equals 90 as IQ. Okay? That's the IQ classification. Above 140, near genius or genius. 120 to 140, very superior intelligence. 110 to 120, superior intelligence. 90 to 110, normal or average intelligence. 80 to 90, dullness, rarely classified as feeble-minded. 70 to 80, borderline deficiency, sometimes classified as dullness, often as feeble-minded. Feeble Below 70, definitely feeble-minded. Okay. Ways of hospitalizing an insane person. First is through judicial method or court process. Upon petition by the director of health or the court, upon knowledge that the imbecile or insane committed a felony or a crime. Okay. Next is extrajudicial method or out-of-court method. Okay. Voluntary by the individual himself or involuntary upon petition by his relatives or government agencies. Okay. Judicial methods. Rule 101 of the rules of court provides for the proceedings for hospitalization of an insane person. Okay? So, Section 1 uh, provides for the venue for the petition for, of, for commitment. Section 2 provides for the order for hearing. Section 3 provides for hearing and judgment. Section 4 provides the procedure for discharge of, in, of the insane. Section 5 provides for the assistance of fiscal in the proceeding okay so please refer to your book for a concept discussion malingering malingering is the finding or simulation of a disease or injury characterized by ostentation exaggeration and inconsistency okay so the person malingers when he makes up um, conditions for example like he will say he is blind or he is deaf but the truth is he is not okay that is malingering causes of malingering to avoid military or naval training to avoid court summons as a defense to a criminal prosecution to increase civil liability and then to promulgate sympathy okay Types of malingering, find or fictitious malingering and factitious malingering. Okay, there is basis, but as the same, it is a made-up condition. Points which make a physician suspect that a person is malingering. First, presence of a cause for the subject to malinger. A person may find disease or injury because he wants to avoid something like a milit military training, for example. Inconsistency between the injuries or disease suffered from and the symptoms or disability manifested. In factitious malingering, the subject may show certain manifestations which in the ordinary course of life are inconsistent or not proportionate to the actual physical disability present. Symptoms not supported with organic lesions. A woman may allege that she has been abused by force. Okay? But when you examine her physically, there's no sign of lesion or injury. Okay? 
Next is abrupt onset of symptoms. If a person finds insanity or some other diseases, he may manifest abrupt symptoms which are incompatible with the normal course of the disease. Next is refusal to be subjected to painful or annoying treatment. A person may find that he is suffering from sprain or fracture of his upper or lower extremities, but he would not um, uh, go for any examination, okay, because he is afraid uh, maybe the physician will find out that he is only lying. Ways to determine malingering. The test may be general procedure. The method is applicable to all forms of malingering. Observation of the subject during his unguarded moments. A person cannot always be conscious that somebody is observing him. He may for some moments unconsciously show his normal condition and not exhibit the disability find okay, by observation, by the use of your senses if you are the medical legal officer. Then, complete history and physical examination. The history that may be narrated by the subject may not be compatible with the result of the physical examination and the manifesting symptoms are common among malingerers. Okay? Next is application of general anesthesia. Next is application of sudden unexpected minimal amount of electrical stimulus. Okay? That's the ways to determine malingering. And then, specific procedure for determination if the person is finding a disease or is malingering. Finding blindness. Place a convex 12D lens before the good eye and a weak concave lens, say 0.25D, before the blind eye. And ask the patient to read Snellen's test types from a distance of 6 meters. If he succeeds in reading it, it is a definite proof that he is malingering since it is impossible to read the type through such convex lens. Second, place a lighted candle at a distance of 6 meters from the patient and a prism with base upwards or downwards before the good eye. If the patient can see two flames, it means that the good vision is present on both eyes. And then, take a firearm and with the patient focusing his eye towards the revolver, fire three or four shots in the air. Okay, because he will react. Now, let's go to the Dangerous Drugs Act. Okay, the provisions of the Revised Penal Code on crimes relative to opium and other pro prohibited drugs under Article 190 to 194 have been repealed by Republic Act No. 6425 as amended, otherwise known as the Dangerous Drugs Act of 1972. Okay, but right now we have a new law of Dangerous Drugs Act. Okay, I will give it to you as your assignment. A dangerous drug is a drug whose use is attended by risk and therefore unsafe, perilous and hazardous to people and or to a society. A drug is any substance, vegetable, mineral, or animal in origin used in the composition or preparation of medicine or any substance used as medicine. The Dangerous Drugs Act has classified drugs which are subject to control into prohibited drugs and regulated drugs. It did not define what is a prohibited or what is a regulated drug. It merely enumerates the drugs which are included in the category of prohibited and those considered regulated drugs for the purpose of graduating penalties. Okay, So there is no such uh, definition of terms uh, of what is a prohibited drug and what is a regulated drug. They are just um, merely enumerated, okay? Prohibited drugs like opium and its active components and derivatives such as heroin and morphine. 
coca leaf and its derivatives, principally cocaine, alpha and beta cocaine, hallucinogenic drugs such as miscaline, lysergic acid, diethylamide or LSD, and other substances producing similar effects. Next is Indian hemp and its derivatives. Next is all preparations made from any of the foregoing and other drugs, whether natural or synthetic, with a physiological effect of a narcotic drug. Regulated drugs. Self-inducing sedatives such as secobarbital, phenobarbital, fentobarbital, barbital, amobarbital, and any other drug which contains salt or a derivative of a salt of barbituric acid. Next, any salt, isomer, or salt of an isomer of amphetamine such as benzedrine or any drug which produces a physiological action similar to amphetamine. And hypnotic drugs such as meth methacolone or any other compound producing similar physiological effects okay so these are just matters of reading guys please refer to your book for a more comprehensive discussion characteristics of drug addiction an overpowering desire or need or compulsion to continue taking the drug or to obtain it by any means okay that's why uh, drug addicts they tend to commit crimes like um, stealing, robbing, okay, killing, a tendency to increase the dose, a psychological and physical dependence on the effects of the drug, and a detrimental effect to society and to the individual. Drug habituation is the desire to have continuous use of the drug but with the capacity to refrain physically from using it. Characteristics of drug habituation. The desire to use the drug is not compulsive but merely psychical. There is little or no tendency to increase the dose. The dependence is not physical but merely psychical. And the detrimental effect, if any, is primarily on the individual. So, prohibited acts and respective penalties under the Dangerous Drugs Act. Okay? So, a penalty of imprisonment ranging from 6 months and 1 day to 4 years. And a fine ranging from 10,000 to 50,000. If you violated six, Section 12, possession of equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs. And then Section 14, Possession of equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs during parties, social gatherings, or meetings. A penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and 1 day to 20 years, and a fine ranging from 100,000 to 500,000. If you violate Section 7, uh, employees and visitors of a drug den, dive, or resort. Section 10, manufacture or delivery of equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for, da for dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. And Section 18, unnecessary prescription of dangerous drugs. Okay, uh, Section 18, uh, mostly doctors uh, can be liable in this section section six maintenance of a drug den dive and resor resort okay uh, you can be penalized with life imprisonment and a fine of five hundred thousand to ten million okay section eight manufacture of dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals Section 9, Illegal Chemical Diversion of Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals. Section 13, Possession of Dangerous Drugs During Parties, Social Gatherings, or Meetings. Section 11, Possession of Dangerous Drugs. 
Section 16, Cultivation or Culture of Plants Classified as Dangerous Drugs or Our Sources Thereof. Section 19, Unlawful Prescription of Dangerous Drugs. Section 5, Sale, Trading, Administration, Dispensation, Delivery, Distribution, and Transportation of Dangerous Drugs and or Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals. Okay, these are the provisions of the law. These are just matters of reading. Okay. I will give you a copy of the latest Dangerous Drugs Act. Okay? Penalty of 12 years and 1 day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 to 500,000. If any person who acts as a protector, a cuddler of any violator of the provisions under all the sections that had been said. Okay? If you are a protector of that person, you can be penalized by law, okay, under the dangerous drugs. Hypnotic drugs like opiates and their derivatives. Op opium is obtained from the milky exudate of the incised unripe seed capsules of the poppy plant. Papavir somniferum. The milky juice is dried in the air and forms a brownish gummy mass which contains 25% opium by weight. Classification of opium alkaloids. Those that are naturally existing in the poppy plant, like a morphine, name derived from Morpheus, the god of dream, codeine, thebane, and papaverine, and niscapine. So th these are the derivatives. Those derived by chemical manipulation of the naturally occurring alkaloid like heroin or diamorphine, diacetylmorphine, dihydromorphinone or hydromorphine delodid, and then methyl dehydromorphinone or metaphon and apomorphine, okay? Synthetic, methadone, dolophin, pethidine or mepiridine or demerol heroin and dihydromorphinone are approximately five times as potent as morphine heroin is poorly absorbed after oral dosage and is usually given parenterally synthetic compounds are effective by mouth and methadone has more prolonged effect than pethidine chronic administration of the majority of opium and its derivatives causes tolerance and, and an increasing dose is necessary to produce effect. Dependence is physical and psychical and, what, and one is likely to develop into a chronic user and withdrawal of the drug may precipitate the symptoms of the withdrawal syndrome. Okay, so if a person uh, uses this drug for a prolonged period of time, it can cause addiction, okay? And due to this addiction, it will cause an, an effective lifestyle to the person, okay? Derivatives of opium commonly used. Morphine, like sulfate, hydrochloride, acetate, or tartrate. Average dose, one six to one fourth grams given by mouth or by subcutaneous injection. Next, heroin. Therapeutic dose is one half to one six grams and may be given in the same way as morphine. It may be sniffed with or without cocaine. Okay. So, um, morphine uh, is a analgesic. Okay. It is used in perioperative peri operation. However, um, too much morphine can be addictive. Okay? It is dangerous. Next is dionine. Therapeutic dose is one-tenth to one-half gram. And then dihydromorphinone or dilodid. Therapeutic dose is one and over twentieth gram taken like morphine or as suppositories. And then metaphone. Effective dose is by mouth 1 to 20th gram. 
pantopon, a proprietary medicine containing all the alkaloids of opium and may be taken by mouth or by injection. Kudin, therapeutic dose is one half gram and may be taken by mouth. Synthetic preparations. Demerol, therapeutic dose is 50 to 100 milligrams and resembles morphine and atropine in action. Okay? Um, and then methadone given by mouth or hypodermically. The therapeutic dose is 5 milligrams. Okay? Uh, these uh, drugs is used as medicine in the medical practice. That is why it is highly regulated because it is addictive, okay? And it is sanctioned by the Dangerous Drugs Act. So, that's why doctors are uh, who can prescribe, okay, must be given permits by law. Signs and symptoms of opium administration. Stage of excitement. There is an increase in mental activity, restlessness, or even hallucination. Next is there is a flushing of the face and an increased action of the heart. This state is of short duration and in big dosages, it may be absent. Stage of stupor. The person suddenly becomes quiet. There may be headache, giddiness, lethargic condition, and uncontrollable desire to sleep. When asleep, he can be aroused by external stimuli. Okay? He is restless. He is easily disturbed. Pupils are contracted. Face and lips are cyanosed. Okay? These are the signs. Okay? So, you must take note of this if you are the medical legal investigator. And then there is itching sensation all over the skin. And then pulse and respiration are still normal. And then the stage of narcosis. The patient passed into a deep coma. He cannot be aroused by external stimuli. Muscles are relaxed and reflexes are absent or lost. Skin secretion is completely suspended, although the skin feels cold and clammy. The face is pale. The lips are livid and there may be a drop of the lower jaw. The pupils are contracted to almost a pinpoint and they are insensible to light. Conjunctiva are injected. The pulse is slow, small and compressible. Respiration is slow labored and stertorous. If dosage is lethal and no prompt and proper treatment is given, the following symptoms of toxicity may be observed. Lividity of the face increases and pulse becomes slower, irregular and imperceptible. Respiration becomes slower, feeble and later chain stokes and other patients may die of asphyxia. The heart may beat for a while but later it would stop. Convulsion may occur with the pupils dilated immediately after death. Consequences of continuous use of the drug. First is development of tolerance to the drug. The drug is taken in large quantity without producing any effect or without fatal consequence. Next is physical and moral deterioration. Next is untruthfulness, dishonesty, and mental deterioration. Next is when under the influence of the drug, he is calm and composed, but becomes restless and irritable when deprived of the drug. May develop constipation and intercurrent infection like tuberculosis. Those who try to inject themselves develop scars and abscesses in the skin. Early presumptive signs that a person is taking any addictive or habit-forming drugs. If at home, an accountable change in habit and mood. Loose of appetite and weight. Sudden development of clandestine friendship, especially with elder boys. 
personality change for which the parents can find no rational explanation. Unexpected discovery of the tablet, capsule, or peculiar smelling cigarette in the home. And unexpected neglect of personal appearance and hygiene. So, there is a change in the social and personal status of the person addicted of drugs. At school, sudden loss of interest and performance in studies and sports, general evasiveness, truancy, and problems over discipline, unconscious depression, and cheerfulness at work or play over a period should lead to suspicion, okay? So, th there is a change in attitude, okay? In his mental condition. At work, late timekeeping, frequent change of occupation, problem with employer, and then failure to settle down, okay? A, a person addicted with, with drugs tends to be um, irritable, okay? becomes a habitual absent at work and uh, most of, of his workmates has suspicion towards him that he is taking a dangerous drug. Now, let's go to evidence of opium addiction. First, presence of symptoms as mentioned. Then, history of partaking of drugs. Okay, uh, the person has history of being a drug dependent. And then, addict is skinny or asthenic. He prefers to buy drug than food. Main liner, multiple pigmented punctured marks along the course of the superficial veins. Okay, so in his skin, there, there are punctured marks. Skin popper. Scars of previous subcutaneous abscesses also along the course of the superficial veins. And then, fresh needle puncture marks with underlying hemorrhage can be demonstrated in recent intravenous injection. And then, constriction of the pupil of the eyes, weakness and paleness due to malnutrition. Blood examination reveals presence of the drug presence of the drug in the urine, presence of paraphernalia for the administration of the drug, like cooker, a bottle toy or spoon, syringe, usually an eyedropper, tourniquet, usually belt, shoelace, or stocking. And then withdrawal syndrome. If an addict is suddenly deprived of opiate, the following symptoms may be observed. Okay? Check for the objective signs. 8 to 16 hours after withdrawal. Nervousness, restlessness, and anxiety. 14 hours later. Frequent yawning, sweating, running of nose, and lacrimation. 24 hours after taking the drugs. Symptoms increase. Pupils are dilated. Goose flesh develops and shivering attack. 36 hours after taking the drug, severe twisting of muscles, painful cramps of legs and abdomen, vomiting and diarrhea. And then 3 to 4 days after taking the drugs, blood sugar rises, patient becomes sleepy on the third day. Subjective symptoms like pain, hallucination, general body weakness or body malaise, suicidal impulse, depression, criminal propensities, okay? They tend to steal, they tend to rob, okay? They tend to kill just to um, take these drugs. And then colic, elimination of opium through the stomach and intestine irrespective of whether the drug is administered by mouth or by injection. A great portion of the drug is oxidized in the liver. A small portion is eliminated through the urine. Now, let's go to the post-mortem findings in opium poisoning. Okay, If the person or 
the victim or the patient dies due to drug overdose and etc. Okay? First, noting characteristic like signs of asphyxia are most prominent. Face and fingernails are livid. Froth comes out of both nostrils and mouth. Dark fluid blood is found in the heart and big blood vessels. Trachea is congested and filled with froth. Lungs are engorged, edematous, and exudes frothy fluid. Stomach may contain brownish lump of opium mixed with brownish viscid fluid if opium was ingested. Odor of opium may be present in the stomach content. And then there is brain congestion. Now, let's go to another type of drug, sedatives, okay? Under sedatives, barbiturates. Barbituric acid or malonyl carbamide was the product of the synthesis of malonic acid and urea allegedly on St. Barbara Day. Small dose has sedative effect, while bigger dose may induce sound sleep, okay? So, common preparations and their slang equivalents. Short-acting preparations, secobarbital or otherwise known as the red devil, pentobarbital or the yellow jackets or nimis in the market, okay, in the slums. And then intermediate-acting preparation, amobarbital or amital or in the streets it's called blue heavens, blue dragon. And then long-acting preparations. Phenobarbital or luminal, or otherwise known as the purple heart or barbs. And then combination, psychobarbital or amobarbital or tuinal. It's called tuis, Christmas trees, or rainbow. And then barbiturates in general, goofballs or foot pills. Use of barbiturates, medicinal properties, okay, or medicinal use. Prescribe in the treatment of high blood pressure, insomnia, and epilepsy. Use in the diagnosis and treatment of mental illness. Okay? Given to relax patient before and during surgery. Non-medicinal purposes to escape personal problems, usually insecurity, failure, or frustration. A substitute for heroin when the supply of their preferred drugs runs short to intensify the effect of hero heroin to quiet oneself down like amphetamine abusers some patients have increased their prescribed dosage to the state of dependence now let's go to signs and symptoms in ordinary dose sedation without analgesia okay next is decrease in mental acuity and then general sluggishness and slowed speech and comprehension. Emotional liability for memory and faulty judgment. And then exaggeration of basic personal traits. So in toxic level or toxic doses, ataxia and diplopia. Positive Romberg sign. Respiratory depression, perceptual time distortion. Suicidal tendencies, dysarthria or slurred speech, toxic psychosis, and then coma or death. So, in this illustration, you can see the withdrawal symptoms, okay? Dangerously high fever, nausea and vomiting, neurological damage, severe visual hallucination. Continuous administration will cause a marked degree of physical dependence and tolerance to all the barbiturates. And when suddenly withdrawn, withdrawal symptoms may be experienced, which includes anxiety, involuntary twitching of the muscles, tremor of the hands and fingers, progressive weakness, dizziness, distortion of visual perception, nausea and vomiting, insomnia and loss of weight, Precipitated drop of blood pressure on standing, convulsion of the grand mal type. Okay, so uh, these are the adverse reaction if you take 
too much barbiturate and then you will experience withdrawal symptoms. Now, let's go to another type of drug, methaqualone, okay? It is a sedative drug in a smaller dose and a hypnotic in a bigger dose. The effects is similar to barbiturates and action is within 30 minutes after administration. The effect is for 6 to 10 hours. It has no analgesic effect but can potentiate the analgesic effect of other drugs like codeine. The hypnotic dose is 150 to 500 milligrams. And the fatal dose is probably 5 grams. The symptoms of poisoning are nausea, gastric irritation, vomiting, muscle twitching, hypertonia, cardiac arrhythmia, tachycardia, and respiratory depression. Okay? Mandrax, a proprietary medicine commonly used by adolescent drug dependents and contains 250 milligrams of methaqualone with 25 milligrams of diphenhydramine, an antihistaminic drug. The combination has a powerful hypnotic effect and it is alleged to produce its effect by selective action of the thalamico-cortical part of the ascending reticular activating system by reducing the inflow of sensory impulse to an otherwise unaffected cortex. Okay, this is the effect of that drug. This results into a state of indistinguishable form of normal sleep. The drug can also produce antihistaminic effect. The effect of mandrax is potentiated by alcohol. The drug is contraindicated in epilepsy, eclampsia, and marked hepatic dysfunction. Okay? Mandrax is contraindicated with those conditions mentioned. Mandrax has been implicated as a cause of peripheral neuropathy. Now, let's go to another type of drug, hallucinogens or psychomimetic drugs. Now, let's go to its classification. Natural, okay? So, the source is Amanita muscaria or it is a mushroom. Active element is unknown. And then, Banisteria kaapi, a vine. Active element is harmine. And then, Cannabis sativa, a hemp plant. Active element is cannabinols. And then, Catnip, it is a plant. Active element is unknown. And then datura, another type of plant. Active element is scopolamin. And then epini, epina, it is a tree. Active element is unknown. And then next is bark iboga, it is a plant root. Active element is ibogain. Next is kaba, it is a paper M plant. Active element is unknown. Next is a nutmeg. It is three seeds. Active element is myristicin. And then next is ololiki or morning glory pagnum. Active element is harmine. And then next is harmala. A plant. Active element is miscaline. And then a peyote. A type of cactus. Active element is Bufotenin, and then Peptadinia peregrine, active element is Silusibin, and then Silusib mushroom, active element is Elemicin, and then Virola, a nutmeg family, active element is Lysergic acid. Okay? Now, another classification is the synthetic type. Okay? Name and its chemical name, okay? DET or dithetritamine pepidyl benzylate, then ditran pepidyl benzylate, then DMT or dimethyl tryptamine, then DPT or N1N dipropyl tryptamine, then LBJ uh, NCH3 3 piperidine. Piperidyl benzylate hydrochloride 
and then LSD or the D lysergic acid diamide and then the MDA or 3,4 methylene dexo C amphetamine and then the MMDA 5 methoxymethylene dioxymphetamine then the PCP or the phencyclidine then the PCPA or the P chlorophenylalanine and then the STPDOM 2,5 dimethoxy 4 methylamphetamine and then the TMA or 3,4,5 trimethoxy amphetamine okay these are just matter of reading guys please refer to your book for further discussion now let's go to a very familiar name of drug marijuana okay marijuana is a mexican term meaning pleasurable feeling marijuana is a mixed preparation of the flower flowering tops leaves seeds and stem of the hemp plant cannabis sativa the plant may grow from 3 to 10 feet high but may grow as tall as 16 feet the highest quality of marijuana is derived from the choice hemp grown in hot and humid places and from the mixture containing mostly of resin, covered tops, and upper leaves. The, flower, the flowering tops of both male and female plants produce a sticky resin which contains tetrahydrocannabinol or THC, the major pharmacological active ingredient. The potency of the mixture depends on the resin content and this is determined mainly by the plant strain and also by the factors involved in cultivation, harvesting, and preparation of the crop. There are many species of cannabis and other plants reported to contain THC. On a study, it's been reported that 117 of 350 plants of cannab cannabis contain 0% of THC. Another study showed that the THC content ranges ranges from 0.04% to 6.1%. Okay? Other names for marijuana. Pot, grass, Indian hemp, damo, bang, ganja, charge, daga, hashish, tea, reefers, cigarette, stick, joint, smoke, straw, live, bed, acapulco gold, bush, butter, flower, muggles, Grief, Indian Hay, Loco Weed, MJ, Mary Jane, Love Weed, Mary Warner, Mihashki, Sativa, Rich, and so on and so forth. Okay, these are the street names. Okay, classification of marijuana. According to the U.S. Army Chemical Laboratory in Japan, marijuana may be classified as Vietnam Green coming from a Southeast Asia and found to be twice as potent as those varieties grown in the United States. Acapulco Gold, gr grown in the Southern Mexico and may contain as much as 2 to 4% THC. And then Panama Red, grown in the Canal Zone and is reputedly the strongest of all. Okay, so at the right side is a picture of the plant. Okay. Sativa, cannabis sativa is characterized by leaflets that are more narrow, branches that are farther apart, and coloration that tends to be more spring green. Sativa plants tends to be taller and produce fewer flowers. Okay. Next is indica. Cannabis sativa indica is characterized by broad leaflets that offer overlap branches that are closer together and coloration that tends more towards deep olive green sativa indica plants tends to be a shorter and bushier producing flu fuller denser flower buds and then the ruderalis cannabis ruderalis is characterized by varied leaflets in the mature leaves a shorter stature and generally small in size. This subspecies is used to create S sativa or S indica hybrids with select desired 
traits. Okay. Now, let's go to the special preparations of marijuana. Hashish or charas, a preparation obtained by separating the pure resin from the tops, leaves, and stem of the plant. It is dark green or brown and is smoked with tobacco in pipe. It is the most potent of all cannabis preparation. Bang! The dried leaves and fruit shoots are used as an infusion in the form of beverage. It is the least potent of all preparations. Ganja. This consists of dried flower, flower, flowering tops of female plant with rusty green color and characteristic odor. It is mixed with tobacco and smoked in pipe. May June. Infusion of dried leaves and tops mixed with flour, milk, butter, and sugar. Sometimes the tura seeds are added to increase potency. And then reefers, dried leaves and stem are sliced and made into cigarette and smoke. Factors influencing the effect of marijuana. Okay. The dosage of the drug and the modes of administration. Okay. Potency of the preparation. Period of use, short or long term expectation and mood of the user environmental or social setting personality and psychology of the user okay so this um characteristic will affect and influence the marijuana use now let's go to the effects of marijuana subjective effects after a number of inhalation a feeling of lightedness of the extremities followed by rushes of warmth and well-being that eventually lead to a sense of relaxation and mild euphoria. A distortion of the sense of time, distance, vision, and hearing. Okay? A minute seems like an hour. Eyes tends to focus on one object to the exclusion of others. Certain sounds become striking in character and music takes on a new dimension. Witted appetite, food and drink taste especially good. A tendency to be confused about the past, present, and future. Impaired short-term memory. There is a deterioration in the capacity to carry out tasks requiring multiple mental steps to reach specific goals tendency to be easily distracted the suggestibility and release of inhibition increased sense of sociability and hilarity these effects are at peak shortly after smoking and fade away after a few hours leaving a desire to sleep so, ob objective effects, moderate increase in resting pulse rate, reddening of the eyes due to dilatation of the conjunctival blood vessels, difficulty of speech and of remembering the logical trend of what was being said. Then, neurological and EEG examinations show slight increase in cortical functions, tremors and muscular incoordination. And in high dose, it may cause frank hallucination, delusion, and paranoid feeling, confused and disorganized thinking, and then toxic psychosis. Okay? So, in this illustration, you can see the effects on the brain if you use marijuana. Okay? There is dopamine release greater appetite and thirst affects depression affects anxiety memory problem impaired judgment delayed reaction paranoia and hallucinations and withdrawal and addiction okay so other undesirable effects bronchitis and asthma may occur in susceptible individuals and may be treated symptomatically Nausea and vomiting occasionally develop when a novice smokes too much but disappear as the effect of the drug wears off. 
panic reaction occurs when the individual becomes frightened about the effects of the drug and starts to doubt that the changes are irreversible. It is more common among the novice users and more frequently observed in areas where people believe that smoking marijuana causes deviant de de behavior, but rare where it is accepted as a recreational intoxicant. And then acute toxic psychosis, a temporary malfunction or less in reality. This is self-limited and usually no drug is necessary. The patient must only be protected from injury for the duration of his disorientation. And then a motivational syndrome. This is characterized by a progress, progressive change from conforming achievement-oriented behavior to a state of relaxed drifting. Okay? The patient is aloof. Okay? As a result, the person affected seems unwilling to follow routines, endures frustrations, or carry out long-range plans. In extreme cases, greater introversion is exhibited with the subject becoming totally involved with the present while disregarding the future goal. He tends towards childlike magical thinking and reports greater creativity but less objective productivity. The condition is reversible and if smoking is discontinued, the user returns to his pre-drug level of functioning. Okay, so those are the undesirable effects if a person takes marijuana. Okay, as, as, as um, like what I said before guys, these are just matters of reading. Please refer to your book. Now, marijuana is not addictive. Physical dependence and dose tolerance do not develop with its use and withdrawal symptoms are not seen when usage is discontinued. Psychic dependence may occur among marijuana users. Marijuana has three major components, THC, cannabidiol, and cannabinol. All of them have pharmacologic activity. Variance in the amount of the active constituents has some bearing in the difference in pharmacologic activities. The metabolism of cannabinoid takes place in the liver and possibly on other side like the lung. The cannabinoids are rapidly hydrolyzed into some form of 11 hydroxy compounds. A small amount is found in the blood and there is a major metabolite in the feces. There is a rapid elimination of THC from the blood during the first 40 minutes, then a much slower elimination in the next 24 hours. Okay. Now, let's go to lysergic acid diethylamide. First synthesized by Dr. Albert Hoffman and Dr. Arthur Stell while working in Swiss pharmaceutical firm. Drug obtained from alkaloid ergot work as an active oxytoxic vasoconstrictor and potent CNS effects. This drug induces tranquility and reduce the need for analgesic in cases of terminal cancer. Okay? Physical properties of the drug, colorless, tasteless, odorless, usually in liquid form and taken orally. Symptoms of the drug, physiological, dilation of the pupils over activity of reflexes, increased muscle tension, Lack of coordination, visual disturbance. Somatic, dizziness, weakness, tremor, nausea, drowsiness, paresthesia, and blurred vision. Perceptual, alteration of shape and color, music appreciation with abnorm abnormal intensity, focusing difficulty, sharpening of the hearing sense. Psychic, mood alteration, tension, distortion of time. Sense, difficulty in thought expression, visual hallucination, and delusion. Dose and tolerance, 100 times more potent than psilocybin and 4,000 times more potent than miscaline in producing psychological effect. 50 microgram can produce a psychological effect. The normal dose is from 100 to 250 microgram. 
untoward effect of the drug or the adverse effect of the drug. Acute panic reaction may lead to suicide attempt, causing uncontrollable violence or aggression, causing chromosomal breaks or chromosomal rearrangement which may persist as long as 15 months. Damage of the WBC may cause leukemia. Okay. Phenothiazine and barbiturate, single or combinational, others hallucinogens and psychomimetic drugs. The onset is more rapid, increasing the likelihood of a panic reaction. The duration of action is only 1 to 2 hours. The autonomic effects consisting of pupil dilation and elevation of blood pressure are more marked than in LSD. MDA or love pill induced a relatively mild LSD-like reaction lasting to 6 to 10 hours. The amphetamine-like effect it produces tends to persist longer than the psychomimetic effect. The causes euphoria instead of psychic depression as the coming down effect. Okay, those are the adverse reaction. Okay, next is morning glory. The seeds contain compounds similar to LSD. Symptoms in including drowsiness, perceptual distortion, confusion, liability of effect, hallucination, giddiness, and euphoria. And then, mushroom psilocybin. This is available in powder and liquid form and extracted from mushroom which grows in Mexico. The effect is similar to miscaline, example, datura and nutmeg. Next is cactus peyote. Miscaline produce effects similar to LSD but less potent. Now, let's go to stimulants. Amphetamine, substitute of epinephrine, which was isolated from the adrenal gland and from ephedrine, obtained from the Chinese herb ephedra vulgaris. Methamphetamine, also called meth, speed, crystal, crank, white cross tablet and then dextromethamine plus amphetamine also called footballs reasons why some persons abuse the use of amphetamine for thrill as a substitute when other necrotic supplies are temporarily cut off to give a feeling of increased strength and endurance to reduce fatigue during athletic performance, to ward a sleep among students cramming for the examination, as a body reducer by reducing appetite, to effect a prolonged high when used in combination with other drugs like alcohol, heroin, or barbiturates. Okay? Types of amphetamine abusers, adaptive abusers, those who take amphetamine to bolster their functioning within conventional, interpersonal, and social activities, okay? In order to boost your confidence, in order to work hard, okay, you take these illegal drugs. Next is escapist abusers, those who abuse amphetamine to avoid such interpersonal and social activities, okay? Uh, uh, those persons who can't face the reality, so they take this illegal drug. The phases, up or active phase, 2 to 4 hours interval for 4 to 5 days during the time he remains awake. And then the down or reactive phase, after being awake and continuously active for 4 to five days. So, what are the dangers of amphetamine used? Overactivity leading to social consequence or aggressive behavior. Stealing and murder may have been associated with excessive amphetamine taking. Production of a psychotic illness of the schizophrenic type. Shock and collapse following amphetamine usage and excessive physical exertion may lead to habituation, risk of suicide during the withdrawal phase. Now, what are the withdrawal symptoms of amphetamine? Okay, first, initially, there is a sensation of chilliness, 
and easiness and yawning. These symptoms will be followed by rhinorrhea, lacrimation, and midriasis. Next, respiration will become labored and short with a feeling of anorexia. Next, later the person will fall asleep and if awakened, the symptoms will become pronounced with tachycardia, fever, and hypertension. Next, pain and cramp of the legs and abdomin abdominal will be observed. Perspiration, vomiting, diarrhea, and tremor will be observed. Excretion 50% of amphetamine is destroyed in the liver by dissemination and rest in the kidney at a slower rate. The drug used to appear in the urine 3 hours after administration. Now, let's go to cocaine. Cocaine is an alkaloid from the leaves of the coca shrub cultivated extensively in Bolivia and Peru. It is also grown in Java, Taiwan, and Sri Lanka. The leaves are harvested from the plant not less than 10 months old. The matured leaves are plucked, dried, and packed in bales. Cocaine may be taken by injection, by chewing, or by sniffing of crystals through the nostrils. The coca leaf is chewed by many Indians of the Andes for its stimulating effect and also for depressing appetite. Repeated sniffing of cocaine crystals into the nasal passage may cause gradual erosion and perforation of the nasal membrane. Cocaine stimulates the sympathetic system causing increased pulse rate, dilatation of the pupils, and perspiration. It is a euphoriant and speedily relieves fatigue. Cocaine is said to cause sexual excitement and the drug therefore is popular among the undersexed or sexual perverts. If cocaine is taken for a period of time, especially in excessive dosage, it may cause pallor, poor appetite, salivation, loss of weight, and damage to the nasal membrane and cartilage in sniffers. Cutaneous scars of old injection sites may be evident and habitual cocaine eaters develop black teeth and tongue. Magnan's symptoms are the feeling as if grains of sand are lying under the skin or small insects or cocaine bugs are creeping on the skin is the most char characteristic symptom. It has been reported that cocaine leads to erotic tension in women. Death may be due to epilepsy or, or respiratory failure. The drug, when withdrawn from the user, may cause withdrawal symptoms in the form of insomnia, reactive depression, and paranoid attitudes, which may lead to paranoid psychosis. Cocaine body packer syndrome refers to the in ingestion of multiple small packages of cocaine for the purpose of transporting the contraband. The drug is placed in a durable, non-digestible container taken by mouth to be recovered at the place of destination in the fecal discharge. Aside from human beings, the packages are fed to camels or ducks. In the case of ducks, they are slaughtered to retrieve the drug. Rupture of the container while in the alimentary tract with consequent cocaine poisoning has been reported in the literature okay so this is the term drug mule okay replace uh, the drugs inside the body okay of animals of people in order to transport it from one place to another without detection there are other factors to be considered which may be responsible for the death. First, the, decid the decedent may usually be susceptible to the deleterious effect of the drug. Second, the combination of the drugs taken can interact in an additive fashion. Third, some pre-existing natural disease may have contributed to the death. Fourth, the rapid absorption of large quantity of the drug can kill prior to complete absorption of all substance from the gastrointestinal tract. 
fifth, normal metabolic degradation of the chemical can reduce its blood concentration during the prolonged survival interval in which respiratory complications and hypoxic encephalopathy maintain coma and act as the immediate cause of death. Next, identification of some dangerous drugs, okay? Gross and microscopic, okay? How drugs are identified. In as much as marijuana is smoked as leaf fragments, its identification may be used on the botanical features, grossly and micros microscopically, by trained experts. A complete leaf may be identified by the characteristic irregular shape. Microscopically, identification depends largely on observation of short hair on the upper side of the leaf known as systoleth and the presence of longer non-glandular hair on the opposite side. Okay. Second, microcrystalline test. A drop of chemical reagent is added to a small quantity of the drug on a microscopic slide. After a short time, a chemical reaction ensues, producing a crystalline precipitate. It is the size and shape of the crystal under the microscopic examination that is characteristic of the drug. Okay. Next is the color test. Opium and its derivative together with amphetamine. Okay. Marquis test. 2% formaldehyde in sulfuric acid turns purple in the presence of heroin and morphine as well as most opium derivatives. The test will also produce an orange-brown color when mixed with amphetamine and methamphetamine. Okay? In barbiturates, the Delhi Copani test. Okay? 1% cobalt acetate in methanol is first added to the suspected material followed by percent isoprofilamine in methanol. A violet blue color is produced. This is a valuable screening test for barbiturate. Zwicker's test. An, appro an approximately 0.5 ml of 0.5% aqueous solution of copper sulfate to a small amount of sample. Mix gently and add an equal volume of a 5% solution of pyridine in chloroform. Shake first the layers, separate and observe the color of the chloroform layer. If the sample contains the free acid or sodium salt of a barbiturate, the chloroform layer will be purple. If the sample contains the free acid or sodium salt of thiobarbiturate, the chloroform layer will be bright green. Okay, If you are the medical legal examiner, should take note of this test. Okay? And its meaning. Next is marijuana. Dokinos Levin test. Solution A is a mixture of 2% vanillin and 1% acetaldehyde in ethyl alcohol. Solution B is concentrated hydrochloric acid. And solutions A, B, and C are added respectively to the suspected material. A positive result is shown by purple color in the chloroform next is lsd the van Ert test one percent p dimethyl amino benzaldehyde and ten percent concentrated hydrochloric acid in ethyl alcohol this reagent turns blue purple in the presence of lsd however owing to the extremely small quantities of lsd in illicit preparations this test is difficult to conduct under field conditions. Okay, Next, um, illegal drug is cocaine. Cobalt thiocinate test. 2% cobalt thiocinate in water. This reagent produces a blue flaky precipitate in the presence of cocaine. The test is not reliable as many other drugs and diluents respond in the same way manner okay so if you are the examiner you should take note of those um, reactions next chromatography thin layer chromatography 
gas chromatography in both methods, the drugs is separated from the diluent while providing for its identification. Another test, spectrometry, selective absorption of light by drugs in the UV or ultraviolet and infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. UV spectrum is not conclusive for the positive identification of drug because other drugs may very well produce an indistinguishable spectrum but may be useful to establish the probable identity of the drug. Um, spectrographometry can specifically identify substances but the substance to be identified must be in pure form. A combination of pre preliminary screening by UV followed by verification through infrared spectrometry is the most ideal approach to drug identification. Okay? Now, let's go to delirians. Okay? Drugs which cause delirium, intoxication, and other mental and psychic disturbances when the toxic vapors and fumes are inhaled, are not covered by the Dangerous Drugs Act of 1972 as amended. Hence, Presidential Decree Number 1619 was promulgated on July 23, 1979. Okay. However, there is a new and updated law of the Dangerous Drugs Act. Okay. I will provide you the new uh, law for you to study. Okay. So, in this law, drugs included in PD 1619, volatile substances including any liquid, solid, or mixed substance having the property of releasing toxic vapors or fumes containing one or more of the following chemical compounds. Methanol striene, ethanol naphtalone, is isopropanol and pentane, ethyl acetate, and propyl acetate and butyl acetate acetone methyl ethyl ketone methyl butyl ketone benzene toluene and hexane and heptane methylene chloride trichloroethylene tetrachloroethylene nitrous oxide dichloro difluoromethane isoamyl nitrate chloroform and silane okay these are just matters of Reading, guys. Please refer to your book, okay? These are the enumerated um, toxic vapors or fumes, okay? Which are prohibited in this law. Acts which are punishable. The use or possession of volatile substances for the purpose of inhalation to induce or produce intoxication or any of the conditions described in sections 1. The sale, administration, delivery, or giving away to another, any term whatsoever, or distribution, dispatch, transaction, or transportation, or acting as a broker in any such transaction, any substance or mixture, or substances containing one or more of the chemical compounds mentioned in Section 1. Okay, all of this, you can be liable. Maintenance of a den, dive, or resort where any substance or mixture of substances containing one or more chemical compounds mentioned in Section 1. Okay. Next, the sale or offer to sell volatile substances to minors without requiring the written consent of their parents or guardians as a condition for such sale or offer to sell, provided that when that Minor is 18 years or over and is duly licensed to drive a motor vehicle. Such written consent shall not be necessary when the volatile substance sold or offered for sale is gasoline or any other mo motor fuel for vehicle. Okay, The sale of or offer to sell to minors of liquors or beverages containing an alcoholic content, content of 30% or above. Okay, is prohibited. Okay, now let's discuss the present state of the drug problem in the Philippines. Okay, marijuana is now planted in almost every province of the country. The profit aspect is comparatively great. Local and foreign demands are probably more. 
the Philippine climate is most conducive to favorable growth. There is an increasing number of our youth who are prospective users. Pushers motivated by profit, although unquanti unquantifiable, are seemingly increasing in numbers. Property offense can be directly correlated with the drug dependence. High with the drug means high in crime. The effects of the drugs responsible are toxic psychotic effect, release of in inhibition, confusion of thought, and disorganization of ideas, suggestibility, okay? However, um, the present government is, is eradicating drug in a rapid rate. We are... We, we are having a war with drugs as of the moment, okay? There is an increase in vehicular accidents with a driver under the influence of drug due to distortion of time, distance, vision, and hearing, aggressiveness, lack of inhibition, deterioration of the capacity to carry out tasks requiring multiple steps to reach a specific goal mental confusion and psychosis, desire to sleep during the later part. Next is suicide is more common among the drug users. This may be attributed to frank hallucination, delusion or paranoid feeling, confused or disorganized thinking, panic syndrome, feeling of worthlessness, suggestibility and release of inhibition. Next is mental affection like psychosis among drug users is on the rise. Truancy and dropout in schools among users are rampant. The socio-economic condition of the family is affected. Of course, everybody is affected. If you have a brother or a sister who is addicted in dangerous drugs. The socio-economic condition of the family is affected. The socio-economic progress of our country has been markedly prejudiced. Now, let's go to the ways of controlling or combating the drug problem. Okay, First, by preventing users to further use the drug. Okay, You, you should cut access th through counseling, treatment, and rehabilitation destruction of the source of the drug, instilling into the mind the philosophy that it is better late than never. Okay? Next, by preventing non-users from starting a life of drug dependence. Medical means, research on the causes, epidemiology, sym symptomatology, prevention and cure. Drug dependence is a social malady and like any human disease, can only be mi minimized, if not eradicated by means of a scientific approach. Formation and implementation of medical hypothesis, attenuation, fortification. Next is concerted social action, instilling the maxim that drug dependence does not pay. Next, preventive education, like group counseling, individual case study. Next, in case of addition of a new drug to the list of dangerous drugs, no criminal liability involving the same under this act shall arise until the lapse of 15 days from the last publication of such notice. Okay, so this is a matter of procedure. All laws, okay, must be published in a newspaper of general circulation before it can be, it can bind individuals okay next in case of removal of a drug from the list of dangerous drugs all pending criminal prosecution involving such a drug under the act shall forthwith be dismissed okay because uh because of the constitutional right of the accused to be presumed innocent okay now, prescription of dangerous drugs, prescription forms. For the purpose of this act, all prescriptions issued by physicians, 
dentists, veterinarians, or practitioners shall be made out on forms exclusively issued by and obtained from the board. Such forms shall be made of a special kind of paper and shall be distributed in such quantities and contain such information and other data as the board may, by rules and regulation, require. Such forms shall not be issued by the board or any of its employees except to licensed physicians, dentists, veterinarians, and practitioners in such quantities as the board may authorize. So, however, in emergency cases, the required prescription form may not be used. In such emergency cases, however, as the board may specify in the public interest, prescriptions need not be accomplished on such forms, okay? If the situation is an emergency. The following specific conditions shall within the category of emergency wherein the required form may not be used. First, where the prescription has to be used on a patient whose need for dangerous drugs is immediate and urgent and has been brought by the effects or during the course of natural or other calamities, such as typhoons, earthquakes, conflagrations, and etc., of such a magnitude as to preclude prompt access to the official prescription forms of dangerous drugs, okay, in terms of calamity, where the access to the form is impossible. Next, where the need for prescribing the dangerous drugs has arisen as a result of a serious accident necessitating the administration of the drugs at the scene or in the vicinity of the accident and the required prescription forms are not readily available. Third, where the need for the dangerous drug is urgent and its readily availability may, in the opinion of the prescribing physician, spell the difference between life and death of the patient, and for unavoidable and justifiable reasons, the prescribed prescription form is not within access, okay? When it is a life and death situation, it can be dispensed Obligations imposed on physicians when prescription was not made on the required form. The prescribing physician shall certify at the back of the ordinary prescription form utilized as to the nature, time, and place of the emergency conditions and the name and address of the patient and shall see to it that the physician's full name and address is indicated in printed form beneath his signature. Next, the prescribing physician shall, within three days after issuing such prescription, inform the board of the same in writing. Okay. How to make the prescription? A physician, dentist, veterinar veterinarian, or practitioner authorized prescribed any dangerous drugs shall issue the prescription, therefore, in one original and two duplicate copies. The original, after the prescription has been filled, shall be retained by the pharmacist for a period of one year from the date of sale or delivery of such drug. One copy shall be ret retained by the buyer or by the person to whom the drug is delivered until such drug is consumed, while the second copy shall be retained by the person issuing the prescription. Duty of the drugstore owner in filing prescription. Whenever a prescription for dangerous drugs is filled by a drugstore, it shall be the duty of the drugstore owner to use the words used in full to be stamped in bold prints diagonally across the original copy of said prescription in case the full quantity of the drug therein stated is sold and the words used for only in case the quantity of the drug therein stated is not fully sold indicate the number of tablets, capsules, and etc. actually Okay? So, uh, that is our discussion for dangerous drugs and we still have other matters to be discussed, okay? Uh, as you can see, our discussion is mainly an overview of the book, okay? So, always refer to the book, read the book, 
of Pedro Solis. And if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask me, okay, or message me. So thank you and God bless us all.